Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. In this set of videos, we continue working on making it so that our code uses a database for storing the task list. And we have the ability to log in, create users, and view tasks. Uh, unfortunately, there are no tasks to view, so we just know that that runs. Also, our create user currently allows you to override a user and there's an aspect of getting the tasks that is suboptimal, but actually very informative for you. So, you know, this is one of those things I'm not certain if, uh, we'll talk about it, but I'm not certain if I want to show you and change the code because I, I like showing you this code. Creating the user though, you should not be able to create a new user with the same name as the old user. Uh, right now, this would do this. We're just saying no matter what, let's just create a new user. And the first thing we need to go, we need to do is actually go look to see if there is a user that has the same name. You know what? We did exactly that up here inside of validate. Okay, so we got this matches that is a sequence of all the users that have the same name. Okay. Now what can we do with that? So if that is empty, then we would want to run this code, uh, in which case we would return true, uh, most likely. Otherwise, we'd return a future of false. The problem is we can't just say if matches dot is empty because matches is a future itself. And the DB run inside of here is going to produce another future. So how can we do this? This is where flat maps come in. Because if we were to map on a future and have a call that creates a future, we would get a future of future. And nobody wants that. Yeah, you definitely don't want that. So instead we're going to use a flat map and we're going to stick with that variable naming scheme of user rows. And I only want to do this if user rows dot non empty, then we would do the database work that we had previously, else we're gonna give back false. Now, because this is a flat map though, this needs this to be a future. It takes no work to say false, so we're gonna say it's a successful future of false. And if it was empty, we will do this and give them back that same count. So now we have a create user that will tell us false either if something goes wrong with the database or if a user with that name already exists. Okay, so we can't overwrite users. That's good. We have our tasks. The next obvious thing to do is we need to be able to add tasks into here. So if we go to our controller, okay, uh, this is unhappy because it really wants to be a future because now, and this is the other one where I was not using a return value for add task. And it turns out that when this was not happening in futures, that was potentially fine. Uh, but in this case, we really don't want to give them a response until we have completed the action on the database. And the, the reason for that is we don't want to have a race potentially between the adding a task in and retrieving all of the tasks when they make an immediate call after that. These futures are being scheduled by, by a, an operating system scheduler. We don't have any control over it. So I am going to, we already made this, so this returns a future of int, and I don't want to give back this result until I know that has completed. So I am going to map it. Uh, we'll make a variable called count. And then we can return count greater than one, which is actually a more accurate result for whether or not the task was added. So how do we add the task in the database? This one is actually quite simple. It's actually probably the simplest database action that we've done so far. And we already know how to do it because we know how to add these things in here. So we have our items. And we would make an items row, which has the ID. Once again, this is an auto incremented value. The user ID, ah, mm. um, actually I will type that in and it will be unhappy. 
because that actually gives us something to to talk about. Uh, and then the text that we want, which is task. Okay. What's what's the problem here? Uh, the database likes to work in IDs. Our previous memory model was doing everything off of strings, and that was fine. But as soon as you go to the database, it is it is much more efficient to refer to things by their IDs than it is to refer to things by, for example, the username. That's actually a big problem for this get tasks. And like I said, I wrote it this way from educational purposes. This is effectively doing a join, by the way, between two databases, and that's great. It's great for you to see what a join looks like and to see how we can express this uh, with a for comprehension. That's wonderful, but it would also be slow. Okay, and so if I was doing this in a real application, I don't want to do this here. I want to pass in the user ID, in which case I would have it here and I wouldn't have to join across two databases. I would just pull all the items with that user ID. How could we make this somewhat better? Okay, so what if our validate user here, uh, because when you log in, actually, and we also do this for create user, let's go look in our tasks. I believe both creating and validating set up sessions that have usernames in them. Mm, yeah. Okay, so what we really want there is to not just say yes or no, it worked. We want to give back a the ID of the user of assuming that it did work. Um, that's actually going to be easier to do on validate user than it will be on create user. So we'll start here. Now their ID, and what I'm going to do is just add this to the session data, and that way we have easy access to it. So the ID is just an int, uh, but remember this has the ability to fail. And so we have two options here. We could either make it so this returns negative one if it failed, and then we'd have to have some, some if checking that. But the more Scala way to do this is to make it an option event so that if no one matches, we get back a none of as opposed to to a sum. Um, and how could we do that? Well, there is actually instead of calling a, a filter and taking this down, the because if there was no one found with this username, clearly we fail. And so I can actually convert this into a head option that then I will map to do a check. Uh, and if this check is correct, and this is where things will get, could get a little bit interesting. Let's actually, let's switch this map to some curly braces. There is no more non-empty here. Okay, so I want to take the user row and if the password matches, I want to give back user row dot ID. Um, let's see, else, and this is where because this is a because uh, this is an int, I could make this a flat map. And here I'd give back a sum of their ID. Otherwise I'd give back a none. And of course, if nothing was there, when I map uh, or on the head option, if the head option gave back a none, turns out when you flat map a none, you get back a none. Okay, so here's another way of writing our validate user. It gets an option of int. Um, and if we come up here into validate, so user exists now had been a Boolean. Now it's an option of int. So instead of making this an if, it's much going to be much nicer to express this as a user exists match, where one case the first case is a sum of the user ID, in which case we should give back the okay. And I'm also going to set in here a user ID 
of user ID. The else is not an else, it is a case none, and it will give us back the previous, so, oh, two string. Sessions only store strings. Okay, and so now our validate has that inside of it, uh, which allows us to change the add task. So instead of typing in a use and passing in a username, I'm going to pass in a user ID as an integer. Though did we make we made a with user a session username with session user ID. And this one will take an integer and return values, get user ID dot map of user ID rocket F of user ID dot to int. Okay, so we pulled the user ID out of the session and we will convert it to an integer. And so down here, when they add the task, we will say, set it with username, with user ID, which should probably not be called username. Okay. Theoretically, I'd actually do the same thing for task list. Like I said, I think it's very useful for you to have this for loop in here and to see how we can do a join with for loops. So I'm not going to take that code out. Before we stop this video, though, let's go ahead and let's do a refresh and make sure that we can log in. Create still does not uh, handle things properly. Fail to add. Okay, so we have a bug with our add. Uh, looks like the the login was happy. We'll come back and we'll work on the the addition and then delete. And so, other than some bug fixes, we're getting really close to being done with this version of the task list.